Well, what an idiot I am. Spent a couple hundred dollars on a long lens and I forgot to bring it. But anyways, those mold are still there. They're all right in this area here. I don't know if you can see it on here. Maybe I'll be able to zoom, on, zoom in on them when I get home, but they're still there. So originally I was gonna do this video at home on my couch, uh, cause it's more of one of those analytical ones. But then I was debating, oh, maybe I should go fishing cause I don't want to burn a fishing day. Then instead of that, I watched Captain America. So it's about 6.30 in the evening, then it dawned on me. Well, I'll maybe go out to the, the launch where I was primarily making a video about and do the video there and maybe still get some fishing in if I can get a couple of those mullet. I think you can see them right this area here. So they're still there. Uh, and maybe uh, still do some shore fishing. And if I really get into it, maybe I'll take the kayak off. But anyways, let's get started. So the reason why I wanted to do this video because I think that yesterday's video, last night's video was kind of, um, I mean, not impressed, but I was sort of impressed about uh, how that all came into play, all the different factors that kind of led up to being able to uh, catch those fish. And uh, now I just wanted to kind of go over those, which might be helpful for figuring out patterns, figuring out uh, strategies, which is a key thing that I do down here because as you see in my videos I rarely fish the same place twice in consecutive order unless it's really specific for a reason but there's a lot of times just specific reasons why I'm in that area why I'm going over here this next day and over here this next day which is also the reason why that I don't uh, do a lot of fishing trips with the other people because I don't base my trips on like oh next Tuesday let's go fishing I usually go wake up in the morning, go through four or five different websites, go through my history of uh, what happened last year, and then I determine where I'm going to go fishing an hour from then. So it's a lot more different, difficult to kind of uh, create a plan for that type of thing. However, I do catch a lot more fish that regards when I put the priority of going where the fish are and where they're going to bite versus what's convenient for me. We're at the Shark Channel boat launch. It's a public boat launch. Uh, I use it quite a bit. It's just very convenient. Um, if I run out to the Shark Channel outlet, which I fish a lot, uh, it makes it somewhat easier. Also, other times I'll use the Geiger Key launch. So I think really what it depends on is the direction of the winds. What's gonna be easier to get back? Uh, a, lot, a lot of times I'm getting a southwest, south east wind so it'd be easier to park here and when i come back the wind will push me in versus going to geiger so it just really depends also i don't have mosquitoes and no seams here because there's no mangroves around which is a huge problem at that geiger key area although that's a nicer parking lot where this one i have to park on the other side of the freeway which is a pain in the butt but uh let's go over kind of the overview and i'll I'll embed that uh, from home on the computer and you can kind of see the general map layout of this area. All right, so here's the map of the lower keys. Got Key West over here to the left and right where the pointer is, that's our target area, which is the Shark Channel, which is right through here, which is the Shark Channel boat launch, public boat launch. All right, and that gives you a little better view of it here. So where the boat launch is, this is a blocked off area. This shark channel is actually where the water goes under the bridge and connects the Gulf of Mexico to the Atlantic Ocean. So the water generally flows through here and then out the uh, channel there. What this was is I am not quite certain if this was where the water connected before between the two or if possibly this is just a dredging area where they uh, recovered a lot of building material because that's done quite often throughout the Keys. So this is a deeper area here and uh, it's created this uh, nice little pocket in the corner and that's the area that I'm focusing on. So you can see that's US-1 running across there. Here's the boat launch. Unfortunately, no parking on this lot. And we got a nice concrete boat launch, which makes it convenient, although it can be grassy and slippery. Now this 
area right out front here is actually fairly deep. It's kind of that channel that's been cut out. I don't know if the original channel ran through here and they filled this part in or if they just scavenged and dug it out in order to get the building material. Then way out in the distance is the uh, shark channel outlet. That's where I fish a lot and along those mangroves where I catch a lot of bait a lot. And then that is the actual channel that goes under the shark channel bridge and goes to the gulf. So that's actually the passageway where these boats are. There's a mangrove sticking out just on the opposite side of that is the bridge. And that's where the water actually passes uh, out and in. So over here, it is just a dead corner where there's no water that can go through. So it's just a dugout dead end. So let's go over the different factors why I chose this area on that specific evening. Some might think, oh yeah, that's no brainer, but other ones you might not think of, but were a big part of uh, why I chose to come here and why I was successful. So one of the primary reasons and one of the easier ones is that I've caught stuff here before. Like if you watch some of my prior videos, you'll know I call this spot my Hail Mary spot because I've just like uh, put a bait out just before I landed and then I've caught a couple of juvenile tarpon here. I've caught a, up to a five foot barracuda here and it's always on that last second before I load up the kayak, I've caught those. So I am comfortable knowing that there are fish here. So that does make a big difference. And that is kind of an easy one. Another easy one is all the mullet. <laughs> all right, that's a big flag. A couple hundred mullet that have been not just here now, but have been here for coming on. I've been seeing them for over a week, almost two weeks. So with that many luscious, delicious baits hanging out here, you're gonna know that the big fish will follow. Now, if I just seen him here one day and gone the next, probably not be that so impactful, but with big school like that sitting around, and this is pretty much after our mullet run, so it's been pretty hard to find these things and to find a couple hundred of them sitting here, that's a big clue. The other aspect is the wind conditions. Right now, it's not too bad. We're 10 to 15 mile an hour gusts. So it's not horrible, but I knew this area was going to be a little bit more sheltered than let's say going out to the Atlantic where you're going to get the full brunt of it. Over here there's uh, mangroves ringing this kind of bay area here so it kind of takes down the wind a little bit and keeps the waves down a little bit. So that makes things a little bit more manageable. When things are super choppy and super rough, the inshore fish don't like it and they won't hang around and they definitely wouldn't be sitting around in this area. But because it's a little bit calmer, it's a little bit deeper than the actual surrounding areas, you could find those fish here. Another factor is the water clarity. It's not horrible. Usually when we start getting these sustained winds, you can find uh, the water really churned up, really dusty. And again, not the best, most favorable conditions for fish to be feeding. However, it's fairly clean, even though it's a bit windy. So it's a reasonable aspect to find fish in this area. For you uh, freshwater guys, this is a good tip. You can see the direction of the, uh, the wind, which is actually blowing this direction, which also pushes that current that way because this is a dead end pocket. So all that wind is creating its own current and pushing everything to basically this corner. So what that does is that pushes everything into this corner, which means the dust, the algae is gonna get pushed over here, which means the minnows and stuff are gonna be feeding here, which means the, the fish that feed on those minnows are gonna be here, as well as like these mullets are here because it's a, it's a sheltered pocket, it's got food getting pushed by, and that means the big predator fish are gonna be here. So whenever you're, you're fishing like a lake, whichever this, the wind blown side where it's getting the water and wind is pushed to that shoreline, that's where you wanna be. Now the time of day, okay, you can see the sun's coming down. It's uh, almost right around seven o'clock. So we have about a 
hour and a half worth of sun left, but when are the bites going to occur? Now you can catch small jacks, small barracudas, snappers, grunts, but if you're targeting the big fish, you know when they're going to be feeding at nighttime. The sun is not right over them, even though it's a little bit deeper, about eight foot. Safety wise, it's still not that very, it's not really that deep. And they like to take shelter when the sun's up. So in the middle of the day, they're out in the channels or out into the main ocean. But at nighttime, that's where they're gonna come up to these areas that are high food concentrations. And that's when they're gonna be feeding. So their diet isn't based around a daytime. Their feeding time when they get hungry is at nighttime. And if you wanna catch the big ones, you gotta fish when they're eating, not when it's convenient for you. All right, let's talk about those molt that are swimming around here. <clears throat> Do you think I would have that much success with uh, the tarpon and the, the sharks last night if I didn't have one of those predominant baits that are around? Probably not. You could, there's a small, a lesser chance that you would have connected. But again, my priority is catching the fish. So that means Taking the, taking the time to catch those mullet. Now I tried and tried and tried. I probably threw the net 10 times in the three different trips trying to get those mullet and just wouldn't work. So my options were, I can go out and buy a 10 or 12 foot heavy quick sinking big diameter net for those. Or, okay, I can come up with a solution which was a snagging setup and spend two hours maybe even longer to catch four mullet and a hundred different casts because okay that was the key now i could have just like oh it's too hard and i'll put a uh i'll throw swim baits or i'll throw top water plugs or i'll throw a dead shrimp out there or some sardines or something but then again what are your chances a lot less than if you take the time and do it right figure out because it is that important how you're going to get those mullet into your bucket and onto a line. Now if you just take a look at this, okay, this screams the one important aspect that I always talk about too is tide, the influence of the tide, high tide, low tide, outgoing tide, incoming tide. If you look at the layout at the boat ramp, you can kind of see exactly where high tide is versus where the tide is now, okay? So we're quite a bit lower than uh, what the, the peak tide can be. And that makes a big difference when you're fishing the flats in the security that the fish feel and the ability to get certain areas. So as the water gets higher, that's when those fish are gonna feel comfortable coming up closer into this pocket area and feeding. Although it's fairly deep here, but again, it's a lot different being 10 feet than it is being six feet in their comfort level and their ability to scavenge food and their safety concerns. Now, I don't know if you could see it, but I made a half a dozen casts at that school of mullet. They've pushed out now outside of my casting range and they're just sitting out there. I guarantee they know what's going on and they've already gotten smart to the fact that they don't want to be by the shoreline because some big old hooks keep ripping through there and snagging them. So they're hanging out a little bit farther past me. So my point is I probably need to move my car up a bit and just let them settle and hopefully they could move back in. But that's just how adaptable they are and that's how you have to be as well. Another key factor is the confidence, okay? The confidence to stick with it for two, three, four, five hours just to catch one bait that you can use to catch the fish that you're targeting, okay? Have the confidence of not going out to the outlet and trying out 50 feet from the boat launch to catch that big tarpon that you would go two miles to catch, five miles to catch, okay? If you go through all those steps that I've gone through preliminary and they all rate as good, 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 and they're all in line, 
having that confidence level to say, okay, this is the strategy that I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna stick with it, and maybe it takes one day, two days, three days, okay? You know that it's the right thing to do, so you stick with it, and then it might work out. For me, it was one day and it worked out. Now I have a, a strategy and pattern for late season tarpon, okay? Bullet, wind, tide, time of day, okay? I know when those factors line up, this is where I'm going to be. So that's my little spiel on my strategies and how I figure out and, and in this one circumstance, but every time you see me going on a fishing trip, all these different factors come into play for the reason why I'm fishing in that area with that certain bait using this certain technique at this certain time of day in this certain location. Okay, there's always a reason for it, and maybe I'll do that instead of all while well, going over like what rod and reels and lines I'm using. I'll switch it up a bit and I'll put in why I'm fishing this certain area on that specific day and. You can see the different things that I go through and the reason why. None of it is just, oh, I feel like going fishing. I'm just gonna go over this spot. There's always a reason for it. So anyways, hope you found that interesting. Hopefully you found it helpful. But uh, that's how I do and how on why and where and what and all that other stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. I'm gonna hang around here, see if I can get a uh, mullet or two. And I'm going to try some shore action and see if I could pull something up here just sitting on the dock. That way I don't have to load and unload my kayak because I'm lazy. All right. See ya. Unless I catch something. <laughs>